you hear me first? Can you see the screen? Yep. Yes. Both, okay. both fine. Okay. So do I have 10 minutes, right? Uh, you've got 11 minutes. I'll give you a one minute warning at 10. Okay. Thank you. So I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to present here this uh, this work. So this is an ongoing work and, and I would like, this is a joint work with uh, Sam Arts and Ray Levergelers. So we are a um, researcher from the management Department of Management Strategy and Innovation. And this is a, actually a research paper. So instead of only a tool. And so the research paper, it's titled Beyond Citations, Measuring, Measuring New and Novel Scientific Ideas and Their Impact in Publication Text. So what I'm presenting today it's 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 more than a tool. It's like what we did. So how we explore uh, we exploit uh, open Alex and then what we release to the community uh, mm -hmm. and the yeah. that we release to the community. So the main aim of the motivation of this paper is driven by is driven by the fact that we really want to understand how new scientific ideas emerge emerge and then we want to identify these new scientific ideas because we know that they are very important for driving scientific progress, technological innovation and economic pros prosperity, but it's very difficult to identify the emergence of these new scientific ideas and, the, and to identify their impact on future scientific progress or technological progress. So, for example, it's hard to overstate the importance of inventions or discoveries such as a transistor, MRI, the polymerase chain reaction, or carbon nanotube. So the main idea of this of this work is to use natural language processing to harness the scientific content of publications. So building on philosophers of science such as Kuhn, in which he argues that scientific ideas are embedded in the text. And how do we identify new scientific ideas? So we identify the first paper introducing for the first time a new word or a certain combination of words. And then to identify the impact of these scientific ideas, we identify the number of times these scientific ideas are reused. So to give you some examples, we identify the first paper introducing the word transistor. And then we identify the number of times the transistor has been used in future papers as well as the word fulleran, for example. So we identify the first paper introducing the word fulleran, and then how many times this word has been used in the future. The same for two consecutive words, so called bigrams. So we found the first time appearance of two consecutive words, such as cofocal microscope, and then how many times they are used, as well as the electron tunneling, and how many times they are used. So also we identify the trigram, so three consecutive words. Here we can see, for example, the first time appearance of the scanning, the scanning tunneling microscopy or the first time appearance of the polymerase chain reaction. So here we identify the first paper introducing these ideas and then how many times they are reused. So no matter of the, of the also we find the new word combination. So where it's not important, no matter the order in the text. So, so we find the first paper introducing the X-ray diffraction and the first paper introducing carbon nanotube. So here the idea is that a combination of words, no matter of the, so depending on, on, on the order in the text or no matter of the order in the text, it's able to ident identify the emergence of new scientific ideas and how many times these ideas are reused. It's, it's a kind of identification of what's the impact of this idea they have in, in future scientific papers. So why and why it's important here to mention Open Alex, because what we did, we collect all of the publications. So the initial stage of the experiments, we use Microsoft Dynamic Graph, and then we plan to move to uh, Open Alex. But the idea is that we collect all the titles and abstract of all journals and conference publications. Then we process we process the text by removing the stop words by pro by having the lemmatization by detecting the chunking by detecting the bigrams and trigrams and then we use a baseline so 
we used to, we use all publications published published before nineteen, so before from the last century to identify a baseline dictionary. So if these words appear in these periods, these words do not do not have a, a certain scientific meaning. So they are not scientific ideas. As well as what we did, also we tried to collect the full text of about half a million of papers published before this year. So here. But what's what's what is really important for our experiments is that there will not be certain mistakes or errors in OpenLX database. And so what we try to what we try to do at the first glance is to try to identify what could be the possible mistakes present in OpenLX. So for example, and then we did some removals. So for example, we removed publications that do not have an English title on abstract. Okay. So also we, we tried to find a way to remove those publications as is stated in the documentation of OpenAlex in which there is an abstract, abstract with more than one language. Also we remove publications with an empty title. There are many publications with no authors and there are publications published in journal that don't have publisher or conference proceedings that don't have any citation at all. And this is very, and it's very likely that this publication contain mistaken, so contain mistakes. And then we, I will show you some examples. Also one of the main, of, or one of the main and problem that we find in, in, uh, in OpenAlex is that we found a lot of publications with duplicated titles and also many publications with duplicated abstract or abstract that, that contains not the, the real abstract, but only re the references. So the references are mistakenly allocated to the abstract. So to show you some example, one example here, I hope you can read the, I hope you can read these two examples here. We found these two records that have the same exact abstract or, so here it's the abstract for the record whose title is object permanence and knowledge of number. And then on the left, and then we find a record on the right. So these two records has different title, but they are published in the different years but the problem is that the paper on the left that is published in 1996 as an abstract, they contain the word coronavirus or I mean COVID-19. And then we all know that COVID-19 didn't appear before the 2020 or at least the December of 20 of 29. And so this is a mistake. Uh, this, is a, this is a wrong abstract that we need to remove because otherwise, in our experiment, what we see is that the first time that coronavirus appeared was in 99, was the 1996. Uh, and this is a problem also because we found that these two abstracts are exactly the same. But if we go to check the, was the real abstract, so wh who does abstract belong to, so to which publication belongs, we see that actually it's, it doesn't belong to the publication on the left, for sure. There are also, some other examples here, which we see the two abstracts are not identical. Not, they are not two identical strings, but they are the same abstract. And then the only thing that changes is that at the beginning of the abstract, there are there is like certain information, such as here we see two abstracts. So in which the abstract on the right belongs to a paper on 2020, 2021, and the abstract on the left belongs to a paper on 19. 54, but actually the genome-wide association study has not been discovered before the 20 before the 20s. So here we see that this is a wrong abstract, and this wrong abstract doesn't, it's not identical to the real abstract that is allocated to the right publication. It is the one on the left. That is sorry, that is the one on the right. So here we see that instead of building a tool, so the idea that we want to discover the first time appearance of a new scientific ideas relies strictly on open Alex, and this is very good source, but also what we, what we, what we needed to do was a massive experiment, was a massive removal of this kind of mistakes here, but we see also there are very good news. So also we try to develop a measure of novelty by creating the embeddings of all papers present in open Alex by using specter model calculating the distance of each paper to all prior papers published in the five in the five years. So this it's a kind of given of idea of the fact that the more distant is a paper is the content of a paper to 
to all prior paper, the higher is the novelty of the paper. So the, the there might be a proxy of the fact that the paper introduces new scientific ideas. So here we have some examples of the descriptive statistics. So we find so if we go and look what are the most reused words, we see the algorithm is the most reused word, receptor, in vitro, activation, DNA, imaging. But also we see what are the biograms, the most reused biograms, so electron microscopy, amino acid, gene expressions. So these are expressions of new scientific ideas, as well as- we about we one minute left. Okay, as well as we look to trigrams, so such, such as the scanning tunneling, microscopy or polymerase chain reaction and word combinations. So in our paper, the idea, also we see there is a heterogeneity over the fields, over the different fields of studies, as well in subfields of studies. So we see how new scientific ideas emerge in different ways over time and different ways among different fields. So to validate the, the emergence of new ideas, scientific ideas, we use Nobel Prize. Here, here we see a clear example of the, well, okay, was the first paper introducing the scanning tunneling microscope? Was the paper published in 2000 and, uh, in 1986, in which this paper is authored by two Nobel Prizes. They won the Nobel Prize thanks to that discovery. So here we validate the fact that the first paper and then Open Alex works really well in helping to detect new scientific ideas. So here we found many other examples of Nobel Prize papers that introduced for the first time new words, new combination of words, such as new biograms and new trigrams. As well, also what we find is that these words appear also in the motivation of the Nobel Prize. Okay, so this is all. So, ah, yeah, the most important thing is that we release the data. Okay, so someone can can download the data on Zenodo, I can have all of the information for all papers, can download the number of new words that the paper introduced, the number of bigrams, the trigrams that the paper introduced, and then for each bigram, we found the first paper introducing that. Here is the, here is the code. Thank you.